Welcome to the Final Wager's Guide to Game Theory. Today, we're going to be looking at dominance. Let's say we're playing a game with dice. I offer you two options. You can double your money if you roll either a 3 or a 5, or you can double your money if you roll an odd number. Which will you pick? Of course you'll pick doubling your money with an odd number. 3 and 5 are both odd numbers, so you'll win either way. But with this latter option, you'll also win with a 1, making it the better choice. Anytime you'll always pick one option over another, the preferable choice is said to be the dominant choice. The worst choice is said to be dominated. Let's return to our favorite wagering example, where the leader has 20,000 and the trailer has 14,000. We calculated that each player has two ranges of wagers from which he can choose. Here's the question. Why wouldn't a player choose something outside of these ranges? We modeled the outcomes of our ranges in a payoff matrix. Now, let's add a column to compare what happens if the trailer picks something outside of these ranges, say, 5,000. In each case, there are four possibilities of how our two players can answer. We calculated these previously for our optimal wagers, so we'll do it quickly here for our new wager. We'll light them all up with green and red to show who wins. When the trailer wagers 5,000, he'll lose every time when the leader wagers 0, and he'll lose 3 out of 4 times when the leader wagers to lock him out. We'll convert all of these to zero-sum notation. Now let's draw arrows, starting in the bottom left. If the trailer wagers 0, the leader can win every time by wagering 0 instead of 8,001. If the leader wagers 0, the trailer gets the same results whether he wagers 0 or 5,000, and in either case would be better off going for everything. And so on around the diagram. Let's forget about the leader for now and look only at the trailer's payoffs. We'll compare the 5,000 wager with the 0 wager for the trailer. He gets the same result if the leader wagers 0 and does better wagering 0 if the leader wagers large. He can never do better by wagering 5,000, only worse. Therefore, we say the 5,000 wager is dominated by the 0 wager. The same is true in the other direction. 14,000 dominates 5,000. You should never do a strategy that's dominated by another, so 5,000 is not a viable wager here. We'll drop it from our matrix and close the door on it so it never comes up again. Now I'll use this concept to illustrate why I advocate for wagering to tie as the leader. We'll assume here that it's a regular game, so a tie is as good as a win. Let's compare outcomes for the leader between potential wagers of 8,001 and 8,000 against the trailer's wagers of 2,000 and 14,000. Here are the totals for each combination of wager and response. We see there are two circumstances in which the two players will tie. But remember, a tie is as good as a win. So we'll color those green since we're looking at the leader's perspective. Let's turn each box into a percentage probability that the leader will win his money and return the next day. All 75%, except for when he wagers that extra dollar. It's only 50% in that case, so if the trailer wagers 2,000, the leader will prefer to wager 8,000 instead of 8,001. Since he has the same probability of returning either way if the trailer wagers 14,000, we see that he can never do better by wagering 8,001 only worse. Therefore, 8001 is dominated by 8000. Let's look at it another way. We'll compare each outcome between an 8000 and 8001 wager for the leader. If the trailer wages 2000 and both get it right, the leader will win either way. The same for the trailer wagers 2000 and the leader gets it right and the trailer gets it wrong. Everything's the same until we compare outcomes when the trailer wages 2000 and both get it wrong. In that case, the leader will tie with an 8,000 wager and lose with the extra dollar. This is why it's better to wager for the tie. Some players will argue that offering the tie is a bad idea because you don't want to bring back a player who has experience on the buzzer. Of course, you need to be in that next game in order for it to matter. Note that once we throw in the ability to tie, Jeopardy is no longer a zero-sum game. Since the combined probability of a payoff is above 100% between our two players, we've lost our zero-sum game. But that's fine, because grudge matches can be fun. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on The Final Wager.